it has been uh, almost four years, and uh, NIST came out with the final report, or supposedly the final draft. Uh, you have been uh, the activist right on top of that from the beginning. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience of these uh, past months? How, how has, has it been developed in the last couple of months? Because it has been more emotional than, than ever. Uh, it's, it's been a very difficult and arduous process. We've been working really with this investigation for the last three years. We went to Congress in 2002 in March and May to get this uh, in investigation approved and then to get it funded. So we did a lot of work. And then during the time we were part of the Family Advisory Committee and we would discuss their methodology, what they were investigating, you know, what we thought they should look at, what the families wanted and so on. Uh, some of my professional advisors were on their uh, board. They were advisors to the investigation. Some of them were doing work, uh, you know, for them and uh, so on and so forth. Um, you know, these things are very complicated and very difficult, and I had a lot of hopes uh, because, you know, there has been no justice or no truth for the families of the victims of 9-11. I was hoping especially, I was um, looking forward to some information about the radios, the failure of the radios, how badly they failed, what was the effect of all the loss of life on these firefighters, innocent, beautiful young people who uh, suffered a brutal and needless death because their radios did not work. These were the same radios that failed in 1993 in the World Trade Center and through a series of uh, very bad uh, decisions and some very questionable uh, procedures and questionable contracts by the city of New York and the um, former uh, administration, Giuliani administration, uh, the firefighters, 9-11, uh, 2001, wound up with the same radios that didn't work in the World Trade Center in 1993. I was hoping that there would be a discussion of that and analysis and so on, and you know what? I was very disappointed. There was hardly any mention of the word radio this morning. After I protested and I was very upset about it, and I was discussing it now in the afternoon version, they, they mentioned radio, the word radio three times, okay? Uh, but it's not a matter of mentioning the word. It's, it's, it's really a, a silence about uh, what really happened, itself, yeah. the investigation, the modalities. Um, you know, I could go on and on. That's one issue. Very disappointed. Another issue is the Port Authority immunities and exemptions from building code. I really felt that, I was hoping that um, that would be investigated as far as what was the effect of the uh, immunities of the Port Authority uh, on that building. What was the effect on the design, the construction, and the ultimate collapse of that building? What was the relationship to the fact that it was exempt and immune from building fire codes? What was the effect of that building being above the law that contributed to the ultimate collapse of that building? And they continue to stand that they exceeded the building codes regulation Okay, the Port Authority continues to uh, say that, that they not only meet but they exceed New York City building and fire code. That is a lie that was proven to be a lie by this investigation. Last year, in a preliminary report, the NIST investigation came to the conclusion that, number one, even though those buildings were ostensibly uh, allegedly designed to withstand the impact of an airplane, there is no testing or evidence to prove that that was ever, ever uh, proven or, you know, that that was ever uh, engineered to do that. So that was a lie. Number two, even though they say that it was designed to be, uh, you know, withstand uh, an airplane, there was no testing ever done on the impact of the or on the effect of fuel that would have been in such a plane. So that is another lie. The third lie is regarding the fireproofing. Uh, this NIST investigation last year uh, found that the Port Authority never tested that new spray-on fireproofing. Unorthodox, the first time that spray-on fireproofing was ever used in a high-rise building in New York was when they uh, constructed the World Trade Center. They never tested it. They just put it on and just kissed it to the wind. And if it worked, it worked. If it didn't work, it didn't work. Um, 
and so that was never uh, investigated at all. And I'm very, very, you know, sorry to, to, I'm sorry. It was investigated, and it was proven by the NIST investigation that no testing was done of the fireproofing. That is a clear violation of New York City building and fire codes. All materials in a building must, by law, by code, be tested. So there is your third example of how the Port Authority has lied, okay? And, um, and let me ask you, well, um, <coughs> I was with you when we went to Washington, we went together. Yes. And uh, when we did the first press conference that we did in front of uh, City Hall yes. for asking uh, yes. about the radio investigation, and then when we asked for money that be given to upgrade the radios, which they did, and the radios never worked after they gave the initial uh, funds from uh, the legislature. Um, it has been a terrible road for us, especially for you that uh, have been dealing with your grief and at the same time trying to get the answers. We never got the answers that we expected from the 9-11 Commission uh, report. Uh, we kept submitting questions and we kept being uh, uh, forgotten. And uh, do you feel at this point that they told you the truth? Um, even with the NIST uh, final draft of what happened on 9-11. Do you believe the official version? Well, I think that, um, you know, while there were some uh, meaningful and worthwhile things, you know, in this report, I have to say that I'm concerned about what was left out of the report. And certainly the whole analysis of the radio failures was really left out. And uh, also left out was the effect of the Port Authority immunities. So those are two major things that never should have been left out of that report. There are some other issues I have that their findings, their recommendations are very general. We wanted specific recommendations that could immediately be put right into the law. So I'm very disappointed with that. And, you know, I'm going to have my technical advisors, and I have a dozen of them, architects, structural engineers, and evacuation specialists, code specialists. I'm going to have them really examine this final report, and then we will be filing our answers to this report and our questions, our objections, and what we think should be the correction. So that remains to be seen. And uh, in conclusion, um, what do you expect for the next uh, meeting that we're going to have here, the next hearing on September uh, 24th that they are planning in New York? Will you have the questions by then, or will you expect them to have the answers by then? Well, certainly the questions will have gone in by then because there's a six-week period of comment. It starts today. It ends on August 4th. I think the meeting in September is going to be a very technical meeting. It's $110 per person. It's, it's a type of meeting for very expert technical people. It won't be for, you know, people like us, victims, family members, survivors. It really won't be for them. I'm certainly not going to pay $110 to listen to more of this, you know. But um, we will see. I will have my technical advisors at the, that meeting, and we will continue to have input. We will continue to be part of this process, and we will... Um, you know, we will say what's good, if it is a good aspect. There were several good things, but we're also going to say what is wrong with this report, what's left out, what doesn't meet our expectations, and we're going to continue.